While Angel Heart's source material comes from the novel Falling Angel, written by William Jortsberg, the film screenplay was authored by director Alan Parker. Parker was very faithful to the book, but he added his own differences, his own interpretation. Many ideas from the source material made it into the original draft of the screenplay, but some of those ideas were left out of the film, cut, or changed entirely. In this video, we're going to go over five twists from the script left out of the film. Angel Heart was released in 1987, written and directed by Alan Parker, and based on the novel Falling Angel by William Jortsberg. Number five. More Johnny favorite backstory. There was more to the conversation between Harry and Connie at the bar. Angel wondered where favorite went off to. This is when Connie, who was enjoying drinking a Manhattan, tells Harry, Johnny favorite was left at the orphanage as a baby, with a note pinned to his basket with his birth date, February 14th, 1918. Favorite went from being an altar boy to piano player, to headlining the Spider Simpson Band and making a half million dollars before the world was introduced to Sinatra. This is the first we're told Favorite was born and raised in Louisiana. The script makes this piece of trivia more interesting when Cypher meets Angel in the Sanctum of the Kingdom mission. In the film, Cypher shakes Angel's hands and makes a comment how they may have met before. This replaces a similar comment in the script when Cypher says he detects a southern accent from Harry Angel's voice. Defensive, Harry answers he's pure Brooklyn. Spider Simpson shares much more with Harry Angel in the retirement home in the script than the abbreviated voiceover given by the film. In Harry's visit with Spider Simpson, Spider recalls a time where he saw Favorite on a hotel roof catching pigeons with a net, only to dissect him later in hopes of predicting the future. This reference to pigeons is quickly made from Harry to Epiphany in his room. What does a lady see in a guy who runs around chopping up pigeons, you know? Number four, Margaret Kruzmark's twin sister. It's where Harry Angel pays a visit to Madame Kruzmark, posing as someone who wants his fortune told. The script and movie are in sync with one another, up to the point when Harry taps on the picture of Ethan Kruzmark and describing him as a pirate. That's when Harry makes up a brother who met a woman named Kruzmark at Princeton who told fortunes. In reply, that's when Madame Kruzmark says that was her twin sister, Margaret. This is straight from the source material, but in the book, Millie Kruzmark says Margaret went to Paris 10 years ago. In the script, she tells Harry, Margaret is dead. Unlike the movie, the scene in the script ends quickly after, without Angel and Margaret having a rather contentious moment before he's kicked out. Of course, all of this was a lie. There is no Millie Kruzmark. Why is this important? It's not evidently clear unless you read the source material. In the book, Walt Riggler from the Times tells Harry the truth. Ethan Kruzmark only had one child, Margaret. Meanwhile, Margaret runs to Daddy and tells him someone is looking for Johnny Favorite. And in the screenplay, Harry follows Margaret in the streetcar after the meeting, not before, and ducks out in a museum across the street from Ethan Kruzmark's home. It's not said explicitly, but it's quite likely she and Ethan were going to talk about Harry and Johnny. If you were wondering had Margaret brought up the visit with her father, the script covered it more than the film. Number three, who did Angel see in the mirror? One of the questions many have after watching Angel Heart several times, if Harry knew who he was, why didn't he know his appearance had changed? While it was Johnny Favor's plan to steal Harry's identity as well as his soul, being his literal body double wasn't in the cards. The truth is found in both the script and the source material. Harry Angel has a wax nose from an unexpected incident shortly after Pearl Harbor. He even tells a joke about how it was once melted when he fell asleep in the sun. This could explain his affinity with nose shields. In the conversation with Epiphany in his hotel room, Angel explained he remembered very little before the war. It's all fuzzy. This little piece of trivia was dropped from the film as being too on the nose. 
and replaced with a very quick reference during Harry's first visit with Cypher, when he explained he got a little screwed up. It's quite a nod to the truth that is buried as deep as favorite secrets. Knowing this explains a little more with Angel's aversion to mirrors. He doesn't recognize who he sees and likely doesn't like what he sees. Number two, Toot Sweet wasn't there. For someone supposedly not there, Ethan Cruzmark gives a pretty detailed account what happened inside Johnny Favorite's hotel room, the one with the candles and a rubber mat during the night of the sacrifice. Cruzmark tells Angel that both Toots and Favorite went to Times Square to find their victim, just some soldier, someone Favorite's age. We even see Toots' suite limp down the stairs alongside Margaret and Favorite, but the script omits Toots' suite completely and is not mentioned in Cruzmark's testimony. Much of the reasoning comes directly from the source material, where Ethan Cruzmark's words are nearly identical to the film. This is because Toots' suite wasn't there during the rites in the novel either, but Ethan Cruzmark was. The novel explained. Ethan Cruzmark was there as only a witness. He didn't know the identity of the victim, and neither did Margaret. Only in the film did Toot Sweet's name get dropped once, with flashbacks catching him from a distance or obscured. Now you know how Cruzmark was able to say in such detail what happened that night. Before we get to the number one twist from the script left out of the film, like, share, or subscribe if you enjoy this content and want to see more like this one. Number 1. The Mystery of the Old Woman The film gives a disturbing and unsettling opening, with a frozen, hellish look of New York City, where stiffs, as described in the script, are found around every corner, because, as Louis Cipher explained, death is everywhere these days. What the film didn't come out and tell you, is the woman's murder was in the alley around the corner of Harry Angel's office when the supposed newspaper stand vendor, Siley, calls out Harry as we hear in the film. He's telling Angel about the body that's still there by morning. Harry takes the stairs to his office and bumps into a scruffy lady, putting a mop to the floor. This sort of rankles Angel as he asks why she's going through the trouble. The scruffy lady named Mrs. Zelkin answered to clean up the blood. The blood of a cat found on the stairs. Zelkin proceeds to say she threw its body away in the trash. Harry, not one who approves that method of disposing animals, finds only a bloody newspaper in the bin. Maybe it ran away, Harry suggests. But then Mrs. Zelkin shares that the cat had its legs removed. Maybe it was this cat. Who would be responsible for this cruel and evil act? Those paying attention will notice during the opening credits a lone man walking with his cane. If you were one of the few to associate him with Cypher, you'd be correct. And it may be the only clue left in the film that links one with the other. The script has Mrs. Zelkin volunteer her theory who would have been responsible, and she says it's the devil's work, or communists. Likely due to Epiphany's OBS chicken sacrifice, many other references of animal cruelty mentioned in the script were omitted from the film, and I think it was too early to introduce the idea of the occult for a story originating as gumshoe detective mystery. But what we can glean is that Louis Cipher discovered Angel's whereabouts the night before his meeting with him and Winesap. No sooner than he sees the body, Angel's phone rings off the hook. Johnny favorite scheme is uncovered. Let me know in the comments below, what did you think of the changes between the original draft of the screenplay and the final cut of the film? This is Mr. G of Synergy saying, a wax nose may be enough to change your appearance, but not your luck. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.